Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to walk through, you might not remember this because it's been a while since we looked at it, but I'm going to walk through the ATM stage 2 code. This is what you have to know before we integrate them together. Now, we've already done this, um, although you didn't really go into a lot of detail making your own version of it. So I'm going to remind you of my one, which you're probably going to be using, and how you would write your own. Okay, so remember we're talking about the customer, the account, and the transaction classes. Um, and they kind of look like this. Remember, it's aggregation because a customer contains accounts and accounts contain transactions. Right, so let's have a little look. Um, okay, so we know, let's, let's look at the account. This, um, first of all, this little diamond here, um, if it's hollow, this means aggregation. And if it's filled in like this, this means composition. Now, right now, we're not really going to worry about the difference between the two of them. Um, we're just going to say that this customer here contains accounts and each account can have transactions in it. Okay, so um, first of all, look at customer. This is obviously the name of the class. These are the variables inside the class. And this is one method inside the class at the minute. Now, for one class to contain another class, it has to have a variable to contain it in, right? So this class, customer, is going to have to have a variable of type account. So if I, for example, if I make um, account, UNT, account there, then that would only allow customer to contain one account inside it. So that really wouldn't make too much sense. And what I could do, actually, is I could make an array of accounts inside there. Say, for example, I'll do it again. Account, account array. That would then allow accounts, a customer to contain various accounts inside it, but it would be a fixed size thing because arrays you can't, you know, automatically add and remove. So what I'm going to do is have an array list. So an array list of type account. And remember, our array list has these little angular brackets afterwards with the type of the class inside it. So as well as having these variables, it's also going to have this extra one here, which is an array list of type account. So guess what? For account to have transactions, inside here, it has to have an array list, an array list of type, yep, you guessed it, transaction. Now, if I jump straight to the code, you can see this because I'm looking at the customer class at the minute. And at the very, very top of the customer class, well, first of all, I import array list. So you can see that I'm using an array list. And here it is. I'm just going to zoom in. Private array list account of type account. Uh, I've called it accounts in the program. And I create a new array list to hold the potential accounts. Now, if you look at the look at the um, the comments that I've made here. Um, they explain what it is. Um, again, remember that this is a private variable. I have made this private. Why have I done that? Because I definitely don't want people saying customer dot and then if they say after that, if well, let, let, I'll just show you. Look, if I say um, public, public instead of private, and then I make a new class inside here. I'm going to make a new class in the same package. It doesn't even matter if it's in the same package or not. I'm going to call this um, hack class, for example, which could mean that it's, um, it's, a, it's a class in a different package which is going to try and abuse um, customer accounts. Let's, let's, just, let's just go with this for a minute. Let's say customer, customer can equals new customer. All right, and the constructor for customer, do I have a, an empty constructor? Let's try it. Okay, seems to work. And then I can say can dot. I get a list of all the public things. And oh, look at that. I've got direct access to my accounts array list. Brilliant. That means that I can, uh, I can add an account in there. Uh, so I can make a fake account for Ken. Now, I definitely do want to be able to do that, my real system. So I'm going to go back in there to customer accounts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to private. I'm 
back in my my hack class now I'm going to say can dot and you can see accounts doesn't appear there what I can do is I can get accounts I have a method in there which I've added get account and get accounts but what that does is it, it only gives me access to parts of it and it, you know it can record and control the fact that I can access it I can't just randomly go in there with no logging and no control and add or delete accounts from any customer okay but anyway back to the main point if you have a customer or one class which contains other classes it has to have a variable inside there that contains that class doesn't it so if customer contains accounts then you know it has to have something in there of type account where it can store it and similarly accounts have transactions in them so guess what I'm going to find at the top of the account class or is it private array list transaction equals new array list okay see that so therefore um, back to my uh, my picture again that is where right here that is where you have to have your array list or your variable and it has to be of that type okay similarly a transaction somewhere in account there has to be a variable an array list if there are many um, of type transaction you get it and that is that is one of the things that you you have to have to make aggregation or composition work one class has to contain a variable to hold the instances of the other class inside it all right now um back again back to this just to tidy this up um if i was really really strict about this then i would actually put that variable in there and the which would be you know array list of type account and inside here I would put an array list of type transaction and that would be aggregation now um, just to show that that's that's it on on the next couple of slides now again what I talked about private or public before um, that's it if you remember we went through the scenarios another really good example is if I don't want people to be able to um, randomly change the balance on their account I only want them to be able to get a to change the balance by adding adding a transaction in their account well then I make the balance private and I make a method <clears throat> called get balance that returns the balance to them so they can't change the balance all they can do is read it you know if this was public here then like I've just demonstrated before they could type in their account number dot balance equals you know balance plus 100 and have a hundred more on their account okay now I'm going to look at the customer code for a minute and you remember that all classes contain two types of things they contain variables and methods otherwise known as state and behavior otherwise known as well variables variables state they're also called fields and they're called properties but it's the same thing as information whereas behavior is methods behavior functions those words all mean the same thing okay so up here at the very very top we have the variables ie the state that's it there that's the information that we know about a customer that's what appears in that UML diagram up here and then afterwards we have all of the functions and these functions can either be um, they can either be kind of normal gets and sets or they can be you know things that we specifically want the customer to be able to do now inside a customer look at the functions on the right hand side you can see these in Eclipse um, it's got a lot of gets and sets I happen to have generated these automatically in Eclipse you can do it very easily by going into uh, generate getters and setters but or you can type them out yourself it doesn't matter um, so most of the code inside there most of the functions are gets and sets um, now there's also one called add account which I've put in there which um, allows me to add a new account into the array list of accounts and the reason I put that in is that I don't want the customer I don't want the user just to, to get hold of that array list and add himself because then I've out of no way of logging it and if you look at this the big advantage is I do exactly that I he passes me in an account when I want to when he, when he says customer dot add account um, the testing class or the class passes in an account object and all I do is I add it into the array list but I also print out on the screen new account number added by this customer um, that's the equivalent of logging it 
So if I was working in a big bank, I would log that transaction somewhere in a file. Keep keep track of it, okay? Um, another method I have added in, um, which is going to help us a lot when we do our GUI and test it all out, is this one here. Um, generate account with random transactions. And that just generates some test data. So we don't have to make a lot of different accounts and fill it full of transactions. And that can generate hundreds of random transactions for us in there so we can test out our account. We'll be using it a little bit later on. You don't really need to understand that right now, but it uses random numbers for the account types and transactions, and it'll just generate a, a random style account that we add to our customers so we can test it out and see things on the screen. Okay, right. So the important thing to know about customer is that it has, out of the methods that it has, the only real important ones, apart from the gets and sets, are um, adding an account, removing an account, and generating an account with some random data in it. And of course, in the live system, if we were ever you know, going to produce this, we would remove that because we don't want to generate random data in there. Okay. Um, accounts. Um, if I click on the account, of course, you know that the first thing that you're going to see in the very top are the fields, otherwise known as the state, otherwise known as the variables. Uh, they're always at the top, followed by all of the functions. Um, here we go. Starting off with the array list of transactions. Um, sorry, that's the variable array list of transactions. Starting off with the account um, constructor, um, then the gets and sets. And if you look at these, most of these variables, or most, sorry, most of these methods here are gets and sets generated automatically by Eclipse. Um, uh, the biggie, the one that isn't, is um, is add transaction because when you're adding a transaction in, um, you want to put a bit of logic in there, don't you? You want to check that, for example, if it's a withdrawal, if they're taking money out of the bank, do they have enough money in their bank account? <laughs> um, are they taking $100 out and they've only got $20 in the bank account? If so, you print out invalid transaction, not enough money in there. Sorry, go away. Can't do that. Um, otherwise, um, give the transact, give them the money, but make sure you deduct that money from the balance inside their account. Remember, we're not allowing these users to access the variable balance directly. It's private up there, like I showed you a few minutes ago. It is private. They can't get at it. The only way they can change their balance is by adding a transaction. So we've got to make sure that when they add the transaction, we do actually change the balance here. Okay. Um, apart from add transaction, there's only one, which is print statement. And it prints out to the, um, to the screen. Um, it prints out what the statement is. Now, we're going to have to change this a little bit when we put it into our GUI, if I haven't done so already for a bit by then. Um, because the GUI doesn't have the console, so we'd have to, you know, maybe instead of system out print line, this, we would maybe return this and change that void to a string so that, you know, they could take this and then print it on the screen of the ATM. But we'll work that out later on. Um, again, apart from those two methods, add transaction and print statement, everything else is a get or a set, which is generated automatically by Eclipse. And the only thing I guess that is slightly new for you is this. Um, these are variables at the very, very top of the program. And the only thing I've added in there is the word final. And the word final, as you may remember from the zombie um, scenario we did at the very, very beginning of the year, this means that it is a constant instead of a variable. It cannot change. And the only reason that I've I've made these two variables equal to one and two is that previously we thought about you know having two different types of accounts and just setting it to a one or a two, depending on what type of account it is. But you could make a mistake. You could get confused. And you go, oh, which one was it? Which one was a one? Was it was that withdrawal or was that deposit? Hmm. So I put those two variables in so that you can just simply say account type current or account type savings instead of saying one or two. It makes the code more readable. And when we do a program later on, you'll realize that it's much better saying, you know, account type equals account type current than saying account type equals one. Because, you know, what's one? It's much easier for us to understand. All right, finally, the transaction class. Um, this, uh, again, this is very short. Transaction, look at that. That's all it is. Um, it's got two constants at the very top of it, which, you know, help us with our code readability. Uh, it's got three things at the top, which are variables. Therefore, they are state, 
and after that a lot of behavior which are functions um, and all of these are gets there's one constructor there which takes the three things that are inside a transaction the date the type and the amount and puts them in the right variables and that's it that's all it does okay apart from that they're just gets three gets very very simple um, I've added one little helper method in there and um, which is just in case I want to you know print out on the screen what type of transaction it is um, I translate you know type transaction deposit into the string deposit so I can say get in my tester program later on I'll show you I can type get transaction type description and it'll give me back you know whether it's a deposit or not and also a little bit of a we call it in programming we call it sanity checks um, uh, if, if any transaction is created and it doesn't have a one or a two in there this will this will return back error so we can just check for that right now those are our three main classes those are the three things that we have to understand however I've also included um, save that I've also included a another class which is called tester.java and this just tests these out I'm just going to run it quickly show you what the output is um, it prints out, uh, it creates a load of random accounts and prints them out on the screen. And I'm just going to show you quickly how it does it. First of all, I make a customer and I give them two accounts. So, customer, I'm just going to zoom in there. Uh, customer McClure equals new customer. Let me shut that down. New customer, and you pass in the name, first name, second name, and an account number. Great. Um, then that variable which I've made before, is, I've called him McClure. I now say, McClure.add account and I'd make a new account object and inside the constructor for that account object I type in first of all what the account type is I could have typed in one there but remember I'm using that variable to simplify it a little bit um, the account number I believe it is hang on a wee second I'm just going to look at what the constructor parameters are um, that's account and uh, this one is account type and this one, uh, I'm just going to look at the account class. What's the second and or the third and fourth thing in the constructor? Okay, first of all, first thing is the account type. Second thing is the account number. Third thing is the pin number. All right, okay, that's what it is. So account type, account number, and string pin number in it. Right, that makes perfect sense. Jump back to my tester program again. So account type account number and this is the pin number for that account um, okay so I've got two accounts I've added them in one is account number you know zero, 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 one the other one is two um, I've added a few deposits a few transactions into the account I said McClure dot that's the customer dot get account get his first account dot add transaction and then I make a new transaction passing in today's date the transaction type it is which is a deposit and 500 so I'm putting $500 into McClure's first account then I'm getting McClure's second account I'm adding a transaction to it new transaction date transaction this one is a deposit again and it's $501 so far so good I'm doing exact I've copied exactly the same code again this time I'm doing a withdrawal the only thing I've changed is that and the amount so I'm taking $10 out of both accounts uh, and then I'm printing out the balance of both accounts. All right, now, what I've done is I've combined a lot of this on, on, on one line, which, you know, if, to make your code more readable, you probably, in real life, I probably would have split it into a couple of different lines. For example, I'm going to give you an example here. I could have said, um, I could have taken this bit here, um, about the transaction. I could have taken this, and I could have said transaction T equals new transaction. And then I could have added T in here. And I could have said account account A equals McClure.get account. That one. And um, then I could have said A dot add transaction T okay and 
got rid of that already. So um, look at compare these two for a second. We got a bit bigger. Um, you could either split something into three lines like this, where you make a transaction first of all, all right, and then you get the account you want to add it into, and then you say um, a dot add transaction t. Okay, is that more readable to you, or is this more readable where it's all in one line? It's up to you. It's completely up to you. Um, but this just shows that you can do it both ways. Okay, right. That's all. Um, I'm really going to show you today. What I what I want you to do is understand this code. Um, if you haven't written your own code, at the very least understand this. And I the customer, the account, and the transaction. And please go through the comments in green that I have written in this code. Explain what um, accessors and mutators are. Follow the link and have a quick look if you don't understand that. Um, I have. Um, I've explained about a constructor, which we've gone through a couple of times in class, just in case. Um, but default constructor and another constructor. Remember, constructor is the very first method that is run every time you say new something. See here, new transaction. Every time I say that, it creates a new instance of the class and it runs the constructor. Okay, and inside... Which constructor does it run? It runs this, the constructor that has the same parameters because you can have more than one constructor in a class. It runs the constructor with the same parameters that you pass in there. And the main thing that a constructor does, for example, in account, um, is it, it sets the default, either the default fields or variable values. For example, if I just run this one, if I just say new account double brackets, it will make the balance equal to zero. I'll make the pin number equal to that. All right. However, if I say new account open brackets and I pass in a number, a string and another string like I've done in my tester program, the first one will be the account type, whether it's, a, you know, with a savings or a or a or a ba, 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 what's the other one? Ah, savings or current um, or a. And then, it'll, and then it'll say what the account number I want it to be is. And it'll set that. And then it'll set the pin number. Now I've just realized as I look at this code, I've just realized that in my default um, account where I don't pass anything in, I forgot to set the type of account it is. So I'm just going to do that now. This dot account type. Now what do you reckon? If nobody, if they don't specify, this should never happen. You should never be able to create an account without saying what type it is. But if they happen to do it, I'm going to set the default equal to um, a current account, which I guess is the most popular one. Okay, right, um, hope this has helped. Um, again, if you have any questions, please get back to me. And, um, and the most important thing is not to know this particular code, but to understand the concepts. All right, thank you for listening, and bye.